Picked up a Bamboo X1E printer, 3D printer from Gigaparts. Find a link in the description below for this and everything we talk about with this printer. They're a dealer for the full line of these printers. And I did purchase this. This was not a donation or a gift or anything like that. And I'm going to keep it. And I am going to use it for various things in ham radio. This is what it looks like directly out of the box. It came with this roll of black, what I assume is PLA. Yeah, PLA CF right there. And it came with these other two spools as well. That one is uh, PAHT, which I don't know what with spool, black with spool, PAHT. This is for PA PET right there. So we're going to put all this together. I bought some extra spools for it. This one will take up to four, well, all of the bamboo line. You can set up up to four colors or up to four spools with different, either different colors or different types of filament and program the printer to run and do stuff with everything that's set up on the four different options you've got. So we're going to set this up and get it going and see what it looks like. I removed the plastic from the door and from the top. This is the lid here. Glass, hard plastic maybe, but there was plastic covering around it. Threw that out. Open this up and this thing, I don't know what this part is, so I'm about to take this out, but I think it comes up from the top right there. So I'm going to see what that looks like. Put all that together. But the best part is that it came with this quick start guide. Get everything set up. Gigaparts gives free classes at their location in Huntsville, Alabama for how to set these up. And I actually attended one of the classes and the guy sat down with me and told me some things. I made some notes on it. So I kind of know how to do it, but uh, wanted to make a video walking through the steps to set this thing up and get it running. Set this thing down on the floor. It's going to go right there in my ham shack. And they say it for some types of filaments, you'll need some good ventilation, which this ham shack, this is where I do all my video recordings and whatnot. I do have, if I take that cover off, I do have an exhaust fan there. I never use it because it's simply just too darn loud. But it works fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Heck, if nothing else, I'll just open up the door, ventilate in here. But I don't expect to be using a lot of that filament that is that requires ventilation. It's a specific type of filament. I forget what it's called. And this has an enclosed heated bed, a temperature-controlled, environmentally controlled heated bed. So I'm not overly worried about it, but... I can always rearrange it and put it in one of the rooms of the house if I want to, but here's what it looks like from the top down. This box with whatever was in it was right there, and then this part right here is the part that holds the spools. So we're going to take all that out and set all that up real quick. That is the spool holder thingy. You have to take these two screws out of this part, these screws right here, which, which is an Allen head, to take these two out here, right there and right there. You can see the red arrow stickers on them and then it lifts up out of the top and then all of this other stuff right here has to be you have to remove the screws on that this look this plastic plate here this this is i don't think this is part of the system this is just for packing so we take this out and that out these four here that'll come out that's the that's your uh the printer bed all of these instructions are in the quick start guide that i just showed you a minute ago i got pretty much everything ready to go although there's a few things left so on the back of it, it had me connect a couple of cables to interface the printer to the spooling container, the spooling deck, which you can sit on top if you want to. I'm going to put mine on the side over here. But So I think I'm going to clear all this stuff out, and I'm going to put the printer in the corner. I'm going to move the printer over here. It's got a spooling holder on the back of it right here that you had to install. And then the wiring for everything is right there. Most of those hoses it came with... And I had to put this four pin cable in right here and the six pin cable, which is not connected yet. This will go to the uh, to the spooler that's down there right now. It's a little bit out of order, in my opinion, on how it does it, because it tells you to take all this stuff out. It never says anything. There's a bunch of there's a big foam insert underneath the hotbed here. And it says to take these three screws out right there. One, two, three, which I did that. That's done. But this hotbed doesn't lift up on its own like I don't want to force it. I'm assuming that it's going to roll up and down on these these um, rails here, but I can't get this this big this foam piece right here. This 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 is all one big piece. And I tried to pull it out. I don't want to leave any piece of it down there. And it never really tells you how to get that out of there. This is magnetic, pulls up like that, 
so that's fine there but I'm not sure how to get that out so after you put all that together it says to pull these three screws out it says to install the screen which we did right there and then it says ta and then it tells you how to the next page on here is how to connect to Wi-Fi and I'm like well okay so I plugged it in turned it on looked at the screen and I'm reading the next page and it tells you how to turn off there's two ways to turn off the network switch it used to be these bamboo printers required you to have network and a lot of people were leery on that because it's like, okay, what is it reporting back to China? Who knows? There's two different ways to turn off network. You can run Ethernet or Wi-Fi, and it says there's two separate switches to physically turn off the Ethernet and Wi-Fi. So you can do that if you want to. But also one of the cool things about this printer is uh, once you download the app and, and bind the printer to your app on your phone, you can control it remotely from anywhere as long as you have an Internet connection. So that's kind of neat. I'm going to do some of that in the future. And then printer binding is next. Okay, and it says right there, download the, step one is to download the printer app, and step two is to connect power and follow the instructions on the screen. Connect power to the printer and follow the instructions on the screen. So, and that's two pages after this connectivity page. So, why is it telling me to connect power and turn the printer on two pages after it tells me to connect to Wi Fi? It doesn't make any sense, but oh well. Okay, and it still hadn't told me how to take that foam out of the bottom, but maybe we have to move the bed up. Maybe we have to get the printer to move the bed up before we can take that foam out. So we'll see about that. But there's a switch here in the back. Turn that on. The screen comes on like that. You can see, and I haven't downloaded the app yet, so I'm going to go download the app now. And it says to bind the printer to the app, and here it is. So, okay, so it did an automatic scan, Wi-Fi scan of Wi-Fi networks. QRZ is my Wi-Fi network. I'm going to enter the password here and connect it to the network. And then I'm going to go download the app on my phone. And once, because my phone's already connected to the network, and it should just find the printer automatically. So that's what we're going to try next. After connecting and getting everything set up with the app, go on to the next part of the screen, and it wants me to calibrate the system. So once the printer bed started moving up, I quickly grabbed the padding. I was told by the guy who was doing the training at Gigaparts to be careful about sticking your hand in there when the bed's moving. <laughs> so I wanted to do it real fast so it doesn't crush my hand or something. And it didn't. It hadn't moved down yet. It's just going through its calibration process. But I did get the, uh, that was the only way to get the, the foam out of it was to wait for the bed to come up. So all good now. We're going to see what happens next. All right, this thing is supposed to be plug and play. And I guarantee if anyone determined that that was not the case it would be me so here's the current snag i'm running running into it is the loading of the film it worked okay i've got white light here and there there's these two slots are empty i put this filament in this green color i don't i don't even know what kind it is really i don't know how you tell what kind it is it was on the package but i don't know anyway i put this in and it kept breaking like it would break off in here and then it would have a bunch of filament stuck in this tube back here. I had to take this tube out and force feed another type of filament through there to push the broken elements of that filament out. Here's one of the pieces of the broken elements right here. So anyway, so these two are empty. These two, this is uh, PACF and PLACF. They, at least that's what it reads it as. So if we go over here, I've got this setup right here. I've Hopefully that's, yeah, that should be okay. So this is a different menu than what we saw at the store. Uh, and it prompted me for a firmware update, which I did. I don't know. This looks different than what I remember. But you can see right there it says PLACF and PACF. And for whatever reason, this one's not reading. That one says it's gray. It's not. That one says it's black. It is. They're both black. I think they're a different style or whatever. But if I go over here... And neither one of them are loaded right now. And I don't know if I have to... Do I have to manually load one each time? I thought it did that for me. So if I go over here... And maybe I shouldn't be using... The, if I shouldn't be using this menu, let me know. This might be my problem. But I go to the benchy right here. It says, please manually set AMS slot for the filaments marked in a double dash. A dash dash. So if I click on here... It's like that far one on the right is grayed out. Which is slot number four. And it's loaded right now. Slot number four is loaded. It's got a solid white light. I loaded it just exactly how we did it at the Gigapart store the other day. This one is black. PACF is black. But I can't select either one of these. I can click on these empty ones, and it changes that right there. 
Okay, and I, I don't know. I can't select the one I want to use. I want to use this one on the far right, this PLACF. That's what I want to use. Okay, I can turn off use AMS, which I, I assume that this is the AMS, right? Okay, and there's a there's a thing in here in the filaments where you can go in and say spool holder right there. I don't have a spool holder. I bought the AMS along with the printer. I don't think I have a spool holder, so I don't know if that's something else you have to buy or, or what. I was just going to use this. I don't really care to use a single color spool holder. So I don't know if that's set up wrong. Or I, 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 again, I don't know. But if I go in here and choose Benchy, it doesn't like this. If I if I leave it the way it comes up, I'm head printing out. It says there's a filament not matched. Okay. I, I don't know what filament's not matched. There's two that are... Do you have to have this full? Do you have to have something in here? You can't just print with two in here. I mean, that's what it looks like to me right there because it's got an X through A1 and A2. A3 is, is unselectable and A4 is unselectable and grayed out. So I don't know what the heck that means. And then if I turn off use AMS, it kind of goes through a motion and it finally says, oh, there, you don't have a spool in there. So, and there's no, it says there's a filament not matched. So I'm assuming that this file built into this folder right here has a specific filament set for it. I don't have any idea what that is. That I don't see anything in the menu to change that filament. And that's where I'm stuck right now because I don't know, what am I missing? I'm missing something. Do you have to have all four of these filled at the same time? Can I not use this stuff in here because it's already pre-selected for certain filaments and I may or may not have those available to me right now? I was just going to kind of use one of these for the first print. But I can't. And I guess I can... I don't think I have the... Uh, I have the app. I've been following along on the app on my phone. It pretty much says, uh, you know, the same thing that the screen is telling me. But then the... Um, I don't have the slicer program installed on my on my laptop or my Windows box. I can install that and I guess try it. I don't... I don't know if that's... Should I not use that menu? Do I have to use the computer program? Where do I get a file? I mean, I, I know where to get... You can go to Printables or Thingverse or whatever to get files, but since that... Since that Vinci file was already saved in that internal folder, I thought I could use that, but it doesn't like the filament I have for one reason or the other. So that's where I'm at right now. The problem that I just mentioned earlier in this video was I simply just loaded all of this. I just had the two here. It didn't seem to like that for whatever reason. I guess it's always looking here first. I don't know. So I just put the red here and this metallic green. These are both bamboo. I had that PAHT right there. This is a PLAHT. This is a PAHT. And these are just regular PLA filaments. I've got a few more down here now. I printed these. These are tie-offs for a guy wire or something like that, or maybe an antenna dog bone, something like that. I printed these for my battery box. Got that design done. Right now I'm printing a cigar holder and printing some other stuff like that. This these two fouled up. I'm going to talk about those in another video. So I think the problem was, I, I guess, the problem was that these number one and number two slots were empty. And the numbers three and four, it didn't want to print from those without something in the first two slots. That's all I did to make it stop going. Okay, so I, I filled it up, filled up the all four um, slots on the uh, on the AMS with different types of, they're all, PLA, uh, they're all PLA filaments except for the one, that's the PAHT. And then, uh, and then they're all different colors. And then I did a calibration. That worked. And then I tried to print a Benchy several times. And it kept failing, saying that the bed wasn't level. And the, the check your screws. Make sure you got all the packing material out. That kind of thing. So I did a calibration a second time. And I'm sitting over here at my desk. Right there. That's where I make all my videos. I'm sitting over there at my desk. And I hear the thing going on the calibration. And then I hear this crash. And I look up. And this door is open. And this thing had popped out and had fallen on the floor. I emailed Glenn at Gigaparts, the guy I got the lesson from, and I said, what is this? I don't even know where it came from. And he's like, no, that's probably something that's a brace for packing material. You probably should have taken that out. So I'm like, well, okay. This looks like it belongs in there, but I don't know. But I took that out, did another calibration, worked fine, tried to print the Benchy, and it, it was perfect. Absolutely perfect. So I guess that the problem was, number one, I didn't have the AMS completely filled in number two. This guy was still in there, and I should have taken it out. That was a couple of weeks ago, 
when I finally got that done and I just started printing and I've printed several things since then. So I'm going to do another video about other pieces. I'm going to do another video about some of this filament that I've used. I've determined that there's a couple different pieces, a couple of different styles of filament I do not like. Anyway, thanks for, uh, thanks for watching. This is going to be a fun process to see how well this thing works for future prints. Put a comment in the description or send me an email with something you would like to see me print. I printed the case. That's the case for radio, but which radio is it? We're going to talk about that soon. 73.